Uh, police review committee, discussion on status of police chief recruitment process. So if those folks can come on up. had some issues with the uh, procedure in the process to hire me. And like one knows, you all wanted to open it up the outside of the park. In doing that, the advertising was kind of limited. It was put in the seven days, which is basically a Burlington-based paper, which I don't know what the circulation is and who would read it. Then it was put in uh, the Addison Independent on March 15th with a return date for the app deadline to apply on March 23rd. Very unrealistic. It was subsequently corrected on the 22nd for an April 6th. Again, only two weeks. Based on that, this is probably why I only had a total of four applicants, two from the main house and two from outside. It was yep. also posted on the uh, police training website I, I and from Porch Forum. Get that, yes. It was only on the police academy website for a week and a half. Okay. Front Porch Forum. How would anyone from wherever, Brattleboro, Pennington, St. Albans, know that Front Porch Forum every time for a police chief? How would they know to read the Addison Independent? Subsequently, we had our, our discussion on the and we requested a, a Extension of 30 days. The board turned us down. Based on that, now, you guys can take over anything on that. We well, have, go ahead. We were charged to carry out a process whereby we'd make recommendations to, to you folks. So when we got the email from Valerie saying that um, you had decided to short circuit the process and do this yourselves, we were a little shocked and surprised because we haven't made any recommendations. We haven't we haven't even done the um, the background checks. Mm -hmm. So if I can just say the purpose when I we received the original um, email it said, it says, congratulations, thanks so much and thanks for um, uh, considering us in the first place. Um, this position is an important position. And so um, that's where I'm coming from. Is the purpose is to screen initial candidates. Um, we didn't actually do that. We did a line item comparison from the, what was represented as what the town was looking for and four applicants that came through. Anybody could have done a line item comparison. You didn't need a body of five people to do that. So maybe I'm a little confused as to what your idea for a screen initial candidates process is. I think we made a mistake with that. Okay. <clears throat> I really think we made a mistake. Not only do I think we made a mistake, but the lawyer, the um, NEPBA, mm -hmm. when we were talking with him. I'm sorry, the what? Um, New England uh, Police Bene mm -hmm. Benevolent Association. Mm -hmm. In the, uh, we're in, the, in the throes of talking about the union, police union, uh, we mentioned this to him, and he said, no, you shouldn't have a committee do that. There are outfits that are specifically uh, structured to do this sort of thing. You're asking for big trouble. And uh, he thought that our decision to scrap that particular part of the agreement was correct. Okay, so then we move on to the next piece that we got from Valerie. It says, um, the board, I'll paraphrase, expressed strong concern about a citizen committee performing the background checks due to the range of the confidential information that could be released. I get that. So you're thinking that civilians, us, 
are not uh, held to a high enough standard uh, ethically, confidentially, to uh, not that we uh, ethically couldn't do that because we're not part of a group. And I get that, that an outside group could do that. And we suggested that as well at some point. You said uh, we received information that said that Val was going to do the background checks mm -hmm. and that uh, one of the police officers on staff might help with that, which seems like a conflict of interest to me. To Thank have you. someone do a background check for their potential boss mm -hmm sounds unprofessional and very unethical. I agree. So and, and I take issue want to place that police officer in. Uh, absolutely. So I take issue with that the, suggestion as well. The, the, um, the idea of the background checks bothered all of us looking mm -hmm. at them mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. We didn't feel that if there was something in there, which there shouldn't be because they're all already police officers, so there shouldn't be anything that's going to be in their background that's, that's going to be earth shattering, you're surprising. Why, why, why would be you never know. know, but you don't know. And uh, yeah. so we felt that even as a board, we didn't want to see that material because uh, in the event that one is hired, one's not hired, and now all of a sudden, like you said, we have this information, we don't share it with anybody, but it's not stuff that we need to know. But as the police chief of the town, I think that doing a full background check to make sure that the person who's going to lead this town in legal identity is someone that we want to lead this town in that way, I think it's important to, to have that check done. Is the, is the board thinking that they don't want to do the background check? No, no. We're, we're just saying that, that we're not going to look so at it. So you're thinking about hiring a separate entity? We were going to have, yeah. hire, have Valerie. Valerie do it. How is that different? I don't see that. I don't see that as better. I don't Valerie get Valerie herself admitted that she's new in the process and has no idea how this process worked. Am I right? Well, it wasn't okay. quite that uh, <laughs> uninformed, <laughs> but uh, if you want to go that route, why not have one of the, the members here assist her in it instead, instead of putting the officer in, in a position, as she said, to be evaluating his boys? Well, that, say that, that Valerie's not exactly green. I don't know where that came from, because yeah. I don't recall anybody on the board suggesting that. No, it, it, the way it came no. was that I yeah. happened to have a conversation with Officer O.T., and I gave him an update on where things had uh, evolved from the last select board meeting, and I disclosed to him that I have not done this level of background check before. Mm. He said he does it on a regular basis. He offered to assist. He outlined a little bit of some of the procedure he has followed and kind of a summary that he prepares of different back, the results. And so it was from that perspective that I shared that information. I agree with you 100%. I would never ask someone to do that. Right. <laughs> and, the thing uh, is, we had suggested all the things that finally came from VLCT said should be done. We as a group had suggested all those things and it took all this time for that to come through. We're talking about we started this on 4718, and it, it took us a long time just to get an authorization from the town for us to perform checks. And we never got to do the checks because we couldn't get the waivers done. All the waivers we were given, we afforded copies of all those waivers, and it's the same thing that the VLCT and anyone else in the legal profession would provide. So, you know, it's not that we don't have any expertise at all. I know three of us have been involved in confidential investigations over our careers, and I'm quite sure Ron is a, as a, a long-time businessman. Colonel in the National Guard is going to be con use confidentiality. I mean, come on. I, do you this, think I, this my is, problem this for is this a, uh, is, you know, us on the board are covered under the LCT insurance, so if something we do, we're covered. You guys as committee members are not. So, if, some, if something, so, yeah, but so if something were to happen, say we disclose something we shouldn't have disclosed mm -hmm. as a committee member, you're personally responsible. Somebody can come back and sue you. If we're appointed by the town, then the town should be liable for our actions. Uh, I don't know. I mean, that would be a question for VLCT, but um, that that's, would, that's a big concern for me. I think, I think if you're causing us to do this, that 
we become agents of the town, and mm -hmm. so we'd be covered. But that's probably I think that's something. Correct. It seems mm -hmm. that answer could be easily found. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I think they, they, as appointees by the select board, I do believe they are covered. But I agree with the committee. I think that we as a select board were not very clear in our directions and instructions. You know, even when Val and I were sitting on the committee, we weren't totally clear on what direction we were supposed to go. And that's, you know, we're saying, well, we, we can ask the select board because we didn't have the answers. You know, when you guys were asking us questions, it's like, I, I don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. there could be a confidentiality agreement made. It's done every day in business that we would have to adhere to. So I, I don't see where there's a problem. And we should be an unbiased organization. We're trying our best to do this, and we, we're hitting with these roadblocks. All this time was wasted. I mean, we all have things to do. I'm retired. I don't have a lot to do. But everybody else does. And I think it was totally unfair. And I took it personally as a slap in my credibility and integrity. And I think that's wrong. Because I've had many more years of experience in doing this than anybody here. And my concern is um, when you're hiring for an important position like this, a process is important to follow. You got a committee together. You charged us. We proceeded to do our job. And then to just pull it away and say we're taking it from here, I want to make it real clear that that's not okay with us and that we're not part of the process any longer. So any public view that this is a process that's not a very good process, I don't want it to be on us. No, I, and I will acknowledge from my per we. We didn't give you clearly state what the charge was for you to do, and, and as far as I was concerned, and I think in, in the discussions, I felt that we, as a group, were concerned was you were to take the applicants that were given to you and send however many back to the board. The board has to make the final decision. And, it, it, and it's starting to sound like this is a flawed process from the get-go, mm -hmm. from the inception of the idea that we need to hire a police chief and how we're going to advertise, um, my recommendation would be to re-advertise and start the process over. There have just been so many places where this whole process has fallen apart and not been what the town deserves. And I would like to know, what is the rush for this July 1st deadline? We should have started this process back when Chief Gibbs left. That's when the process should have started. By now we'd be into it and done. Don't disagree with that. We should, no. be, we should be done now. <laughs> yeah. 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 That, that's, that's, it doesn't take overnight, but it takes a while mm -hmm. to do. Yeah. And, uh, and I'd like to see quality over a timely decision. Absolutely. I, I think this really matters. The district taxpayers deserve it. I mean, they're paying for this. Well, from my perspective, you asked for volunteers to serve on this committee. And as I look back over the past few months, I don't believe there was a committee charged to seek out a road foreman or a rec director, but there was for the police chief. And the eyes of select board, I think you did that for the taxpayers to ensure there was a, a, the right process was in place. You charged five people to sit on a committee, and we were doing our due diligence as we met and went through everything and we were screening them well and then all of a sudden without much notice or explanation you pull the rug out from under us and we're upset that we spent this time for no reason and I go back to the meeting just before the town meeting somebody spoke up and says you have a policy in place to hire from within if you want to so why if that's true why did you seek out a committee to screen applicants when you could have done it yourself. Because we didn't know what we were going to get right. for applicants. Right. Okay. And we you got applicants, you could outside. have done the screening yourself instead of us tying up our personal time. But we we formed the committee before before we had the applicants. We had no idea what we were going to get for applicants. Right. It's no different than you advertising for somebody to come work for you. You don't know if you're going to get one or. If I you're don't going form to get a committee. I understand, big difference. I understand that, but we were under the impression that we were going to get 
10, 12 applicants. Which you should have. And we got four. If, I, if, if it, it was correctly advertised, if it was properly advertised. Joe, you and I had a discussion a long time ago about when uh, departments hire from outside they put in major newspapers. What do we have? Local Champlain Valley based. How is anybody to hear about this? And even, was, even and, understanding and that, that, did, that finances were, were an issue, with the five of us, we came up with a number of ways that we could have broadly spread the word. That wouldn't have cost the town anything. And, and we asked you folks to consider stepping back and re-advertising so that we could get the word out more broadly throughout the law enforcement community, at least in Vermont, if not regionally. And, and you turned us down on that. That was, our, I think, one of our first, first um, discussions. discussions. And the salary range, I mean, the, the salary is, is comparative to the road department. Not putting anything against the road department, but the chief of police is a very, very important position. I mean, this person can make decisions that can affect this community forever. And the police department and the officers involved. This town of Richmond is hiring, looking for an interim police chief, just for sort of interim to offer him seventy-eight thousand dollars spot. I mean, what? Do we, I don't expect to get anybody if we don't have the money to do it. We, we already discussed about the budget, you know. Again, we suggest reopen the thing and start all over and do it the right way. If you don't want us to, to be part of this process, that's up to you. I think we're all capable of confidentiality. I think we're all capable of doing an excellent job. Uh, there's never been any real background investigations on any employees in this department. It's been a, a haphazard what do you call it? Shot in the dark. And it wasn't properly done in any case, any along the line. So, you know. And, and I, we're all here to do the same job, we're all here to get things done the right way. And I think so, we all just really agree that this is such an important position for this town. That this is not something to take shortcuts with or cut, you know, to try to pinch pennies on in a way that really um, doesn't serve us very well. I have, a, I have a question for the group, and um, you you started with four, right? And you narrowed it to two. Mm -hmm. Subjectively, but we didn't right. narrow it to two. Right. We had four applications. We reviewed all four for line item review to see if they actually qualified for the position that we were all offering. Two of the four were iffy. Two seemed to be more solid, and we decided that those were the two that we would begin an initial investigation and spend some time with to see if they were appropriate for, re for suggestion to send to your approval. But we never said, these guys are out, these two are in, let's go with these, send it to the board. That never happened. Because okay. I was a little confused when, if you wanted to go back out, what did you throw all four out? We tried to, when we came to you and said, can so we, we don't have reopen any, up? Or we, you know, come to us and said, we don't have anyone that made the list for our well, first that's, that's why we requested an extension to, to see what you were out against it. But the, we know, but you guys, we never said we didn't have any. No. You know, we had two that right. we thought were qualified based on we thought the criteria. We had two that we thought were worth right. looking yeah. at right there, moving forward. Right. And screening. We thought right. we had two that were worth screening, our right. definition of screening, which to me is about um, background checks and conversation with these people to see how they come across in society, how they come across in public. Um, it was my understanding that we would actually get to speak with as many members as we wanted to so that we could get a feel for who they were, the profiling right, they well, will. The and was that was our job to profile two people to send to you for you not to have to do that work. I thought we were saving you steps. Right. That, was my, uh, that was my excitement about the, the charge in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, that was my original understanding as well. Mm -hmm. The screening, I think the background check aspect of the screening caught us off guard. Right. Clearly, and I have 30 years of intensive Ooh. ethical the, background that helps me make that choice, so I'm, I'm just saying that... None of us are questioning your ethical yes. background of any of you. 
it's 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 a point of it felt like we're it not, in the email. we're not comfortable ourselves with that information but you should so be. how does val valerie you know, make, make the a better choice no. how does how is it that you validate and I, nothing against you val i think you're great um <laughs> Really, um, and very helpful, but, but I don't understand how she's the solution to that problem. I don't see the connection. I'm not so sure she, if, if you, the word is solution, but there's stuff in those files and every employee in this town that we don't know. She knows because she's the administrator. We're policymakers here at the board. Not We don't administrate. You know, there could be stuff on the former road former that just retired. It happens to be my brother. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about I don't want to know. But should you have, have an issue, you have to be privy if to If we have an issue, we go to our administrator who's running the town. Right, the trust, now we say, board, you got information. And she'll say, based on what's in his file. You're the hiring board. Based on what's in his file, his or hers file, I don't recommend this or I do recommend this. And that's what we... You know, if we'd had a sergeant from Wells, Maine that applied for the police chief job, and he left there because he had embezzled the stuff. I don't want to know that. I want her to know to tell us he's not recommended for well, position. Someone should know it. Someone mm -hmm. said you're absolutely right, and we put that someone on her shoulders because she knows everybody's. She has access to the personnel files, not us. We're as I say, we we set policy here and govern, and we don't run the day to day. And I'm just, I don't want to know the things that he's done or she's done. Um. And because if it gets out, they say, "Oh, we know who squealed that out." No, nope, no, I don't know anything. Well, I'm kind of stupid here. I didn't I take know. this personally. I took I it as I understand that with any um, human resources actions, such as hiring somebody, that there's um, there are legal issues at stake. I understand that, and that there's liability to the town at stake. And if it really is, that is your concern, then I would say hire an impartial outside firm to do the background check. Have them bring that information to us for evaluation and recommendation to the committee, to the, to the select board, as was the original plan. Because I get that there are a lot of legal issues when you do something like this. I didn't take it personally because I look at who you ultimately selected and I think we're all people of integrity. Definitely. So I don't think that's, Definitely. for me that wasn't the issue. Mm -hmm. But I think, I think you, you start a process that you undermine yourselves and you undermine all of us and it just doesn't set up a, It's not a good way to move forward in your relationship with the, the people who are depending on you to hire a good police chief for the town. Because Jim's absolutely right. A police chief can make decisions that can affect this town for a long, long time. And from what I understand about the past, there have been times when it has hurt the town in ways that took a long time to get over past hirings. So I'm just asking you to please take a step back, think seriously about what you're doing and what you want to accomplish. And don't rush it. Come up with a process and follow it through to the end. Because this kind, kind of thing, is it's not just about our hurt feelings. It's about your relationship with the rest of the town that you're accountable to. And I, I did this because I love living in Bristol. I thought, here's something that I can do um, to show my appreciation for being a part of this community. And for anything like this, you live and die by your process. And so far, this hasn't been a very good process. Okay. Well, I want to thank you for your time you. and your input. It's appreciated. It's listened to. And uh, and we will uh, we will discuss this further. Are, are we to uh, just sit back and do nothing, or are we out? What's the, what's the status on it? Will you advise us further? We will advise you further. Thank you. Thank you for hearing us out. Yes. Well, thank you for thank you for your time. <laughs>